Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today is an interesting lecture, which is, I would say, more philosophical than physical or mathematical, but um, it actually lays the very important foundation to entire physics, if you wish. Um, let me start from something which uh, I was trying to basically convey throughout the whole course that we are trying to build a course of mathematics or physics um, very logically which means that I'm trying not to say something which I cannot prove based on something which I have um, conveyed before and whatever I was talking about before was based on even earlier and earlier and earlier um, items which were which which were offered within the same logical sequence, down to basically certain statements which I could not prove because there is nothing before that, which we call axioms. So this lecture is more or less within the same um, kind of vein. Um, I will not try to prove anything. I'll just explain how certain concepts might be based on something earlier in physics. Now this lecture is part of the course called Relativity for All presented on Unizor.com um, together with two other courses Math for Teens and Physics for Teens which are um, which contain basically material absolutely necessary to understand this one. Um, the website is totally free, there are no advertisements. Um, you can use it any way you, you would like. Um, so uh, I do suggest you to at least pay attention to the previous courses, Math for Teens and Physics for Teens, at least to whatever items are uh, suggested there. Um, because otherwise you will not really um, understand the relativity part. Okay, um, what else? Yeah, the site contains a lot of um, problems to solve, exercises, etc. Also, um, every video lecture is complemented with textual presentation of exactly the same material, like a textbook. So you have basically completely free visual and textual presentation. All right, so back to this particular lecture. It's called Conservation Laws and Noter, Noter's Theorem. Okay, we will start with whatever I just um, talked about, that every statement is supposed to be based on something else, logically derived from it, and whatever was something else, before that it should be derived from before and before down to axioms. Now, one of the most important um, properties which we in physics accept as given are conservation laws, conservation of energy, conservation of linear momentum and conservation of um, angular momentum. That's basically the properties which were used in all the course of physics which was presented here, physics for teens and obviously in relativity as well. Where did we get it from? Well, from experience. That's as much as we can say. So it looks like if we take these axioms as given, I mean these statements as axioms, so to speak, um, then whatever the consequences, logical consequences, theoretical consequence, consequences we are coming up with, really correspond to our experience, our practice, etc. So we kind of used to have, okay, yes, of course, conservation of energy or conservation of linear momentum. Yes, we do have these laws. Now, what's the problem about this? The problem is that these conservation laws are really quite complicated. Maybe our experience is not a sufficient foundation for just stating that these uh, are the laws of the universe we can take as, as axioms. What I would like to say is that it's not easy 
to take as an axiom something as complicated as a conservation law. When um, Euclid presented five axioms of geometry, they were not taken as something unusual. I mean, it was kind of a natural that you have two points, you have only one line which goes through them. It's kind of natural thing. Conservation law, mm, well, personally, I wouldn't say that this is an obvious and I intuitively obvious thing. So, we accept these as axioms in throughout, throughout the whole uh, classical physics. But we always kind of have some kind of a thought in our mind. Maybe these conservation laws are really laws of the universe only to a certain level, to a certain precision of our instruments, the way how we can measure it. Because energy can, can be transformed from one um, type to another, from mechanical to, uh, to heat, from, from heat to electricity or something, electromagnetic oscillations. How can we really follow these transformations of energy and stay and state that, okay, the energy is conserved in whatever form it, it is. It's not easy. I mean, it's too complicated to take as an axiom. Intuitively, we would like to take as an axiom something much simpler, which intuitively obvious. Okay. Here comes a very important person. Her name is Emmy Noter. She is German um, mathematician, not, not even a physicist at that particular time, mathematician. However, many mathematicians are involved in uh, aspects of physics. So, what she did, and she published this in uh, 1918, if I'm not mistaken, yes, in 1918, she published a very important article, which was a proof, basically. These articles contain mathematical proof that our laws of conservation can be derived from something much more fundamental about our universe. Now, that was so important, these kind of theoretical um, uh, derivations, that uh, Albert Einstein said that Emmy Noter is the most important woman in mathematics. Um, so, what exactly is much more intuitive and fundamental um, statements which we really can take as axioms much easier that Emmy Noter derived the conservation laws? And here it is. And it really sounds extremely simple. Obviously, it's not simple to derive, this de to make this derivation from these simple statements to laws of conservation. But she did it. And uh, it is just a little bit complicated uh, for me to offer it uh, right now as, as a lecture. So that's why this lecture would be called kind of exception when I'm staging something without proving. So what I'm stating is what Emmy Noter proved, and here it is. Well, let's consider our three laws of conservation. Con conservation, most important, conservation of energy, conservation of linear momentum, and conservation of angular momentum. And what she did, she derived that the conservation of energy is a consequence of uniformity of time. Which means, if we are making an experiment right now, at certain place, in certain conditions, whatever the conditions are, and we will do exactly the same experiments certain amount of time afterwards, in exactly the same place, with exactly the same conditions, we will have exactly the same uh, results. That's what uniformity of time actually is. That whatever we are doing is the same, would be the same today as, as tomorrow if we repeat exactly the same thing. The results will be exactly the same. So uniformity of time. 
which personally I can accept much easier as an axiom than uh, conservation of energy. But conservation of energy can be derived from uniformity of time, and that's what she did. That's number one. Number two, conservation of linear momentum. Again, conservation of linear momentum can be derived from uniformity, un li linear uniformity of space, which means if I am doing something at this point in space and on that spa point in space, and I'm doing exactly the same thing, results should be exactly the same. So, life, universe, uh, the laws of physics, whatever, should be exactly the same in this place as in that place. And finally, angular momentum, conservation of angular momentum, then the rotation is involved. Again, she has derived that this is following from the u directional uniformity of the space. So, regardless of where we will turn our experiment, the result should be exactly the same. So, time uniformity, linear space uniformity, and angular space uniformity are accepted as axioms and accepted much easier as an axioms. And if we do accept them as axioms, the conservation laws will follow. I think it's not only important, but it's also a beautiful result, quite frankly. I mean, when I first learned about this dependency of, let's say, uniformity of time and the conservation of energy, I was really in awe. <laughs> I mean, it, this seems to be kind of obvious, that the time is uniform. And, okay, maybe time is not uniform, but uh, under the consequence, uh, under whatever existing situation in, in our life in physics, I, I think it's very natural and intuitively obvious to assume that as the time goes by, universe basically is the same, and if conditions are the same, the results should be the same of any experiment. So time is uniform. One second today and one second tomorrow will be exactly the same second. And the same thing about linear and angular uniformity of space. These statements seem to be natural, and whenever you are witnessing that something really complicated, like uh, the laws of conservation, can actually be derived from something as simple as uniformity of time and space, I think it's just absolutely astonishingly beautiful result. So, um, I did spend some time actually to follow the, the logic, how she uh, derived one from another, and it's very brilliant. It's, uh, I, I do suggest you, if, if you are comfortable with everything else, try to, and you, did, you do need some mathematics, of course, in this. Uh, I, I do suggest you to just go to internet and uh, find this article, it's very easy. Um, and uh, try to follow the logic. But again, this is absolutely beautiful result, and it was regarded very highly by, by, by basically all physicists. I just quoted uh, Albert Einstein's quote, and uh, many other physicists established basically such a you know, pride that uh, we have made such a great um, uh, derivation of uh, really complicated things from something simple which we can er really accept as axioms. So basically I would say that whatever um, Emin Noether did is probably in physics in parallel with whatever Euclid did for geometry many 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 years ago. He put geometry on a good solid axiomatic foundation. And that's what basically Emin Noether did. Um, and again, I, I, I'm completely in awe about whatever was, uh, was done by her. So that's basically it. I think that's all I wanted to talk about. And again, um, uh, you can read about the whole thing which I was talking about 
on the on the website on unisor.com just go to relativity for all uh, course and uh, in uh, in the menu item called conservation you will find the first lecture about Noether's theorem. So thank you very much and good luck. <laughs>